Hi, this video is about calculus integration as well as definite integrals and the area of the regions. In part A of this question, the diagram shows part of the curve of y equals fx, shaded area A and B are bounded by the curve and the x-axis. Given that integrate f of x from negative 2 to 0 dx equals to h and integrate f of x dx from 0 to 6 equals to q, where both h and q's are constants, find an expression in terms of h and q for each of the following. In part 1, integrate 5 times f of x dx from negative 2 to 6. And in part 2, integrate f of x from 6 to 0 with respect to x minus away integrate f of x from 0 to negative 2 dx. Both are 3 marks question. You are to also interpret how each of this expression is related to the areas A and B. In a separate part B of this question, the diagram shows the curve of y squared plus x equals to 4 intersecting the line L1 at points B and C. Both points A and B lies on the y-axis while point C lies on the x-axis. Find the area of this shaded region bounded by the line and the curve. And that's a 6 marks question. You might want to pause this video to give these two parts a try and when you're ready, keep watching. In part A of this question, we are given that integrate f of x dx from negative 2 to 0 is equal to h and this is represented by the shaded area A in greens, highlighted in greens. And integrate f of x dx from 0 to 6 is equal to q. This is represented by the shaded area B in blue as well as highlighted in blue. So in part 1 of this question, we are asked to find the integration of 5 times of f of x dx from negative 2 all the way to 6. So let us find one property for us to use from the definite integrals. So by definite integrals, we have this y equals fx curve like this, and a, b, and c's are arranged in such an order on the x-axis. So if you have to do an integration of f of x dx from a to b, from a to b, plus integration of f of x dx from b to c, from b to c, it's the same as the integration of f of x dx from a all the way to c. In other words, a all the way to c is the same as a to b plus b to c. So with this property in mind, let us first start off our solution for a part 1. In a part 1, due to the scalar multiplication rule of uh, integration, we can take out a 5 like this, the constant of 5. Integration of negative 2 to 6 f of x dx would be the same as 5, open a parenthesis. Now, from negative 2 to 6, can be split into integration from negative 2 to 0 plus integration from 0 to 6 with the same function of f of x with respect to x. So the one in greens is h and the one in blue is q. So therefore giving us the answer of 5 times of h plus q. Now what does this 5 times of h plus q mean? Let's not forget that we are supposed to interpret this expression and how is it related to the area of a and b. So let us put it in the form of how do we link it to the area of A and B. What exactly of 5 times of H plus Q represents. So to find the area of a region, let us recap that for definite integrals and area of a region, if you have to integrate a function with respect to X, the region that is above the x-axis is positive. So this whole green color part is positive, implying that A is a positive, implying that H, which is represented by A here, is a positive. That also means to say that if we are to do the integrations uh, with respect to x, the entire region that is below the x-axis would therefore be a negative. So b is therefore a negative, implying that q is also a negative. So what does it mean if you take h plus q? If you take a positive value plus a negative value, that will mean to say we are actually finding the area of a minus the area of b and taking 5 times to it. So that is my interpretation for A part 1. 5 times of area A minus away area B. Now moving on to A part 2, as we can see here, the limits are now being swapped. So originally the limits are from 0 to 6, 
Now, the limits have been swapped from 6 to 0. Likewise, originally it was from negative 2 to 0. Now it's from 0 to negative 2. So there must be one definite, proper, definite integral property we can use, which is this. If we are to integrate f of x dx from a to b, it's the same as a negative in front, integrate f of x dx now from b to a. So if you have to swap the upper and lower limits like this, we just have to put in a additional, an additional negative sign like this. So with this in mind, let's swap this part from 6 to 0 into a 0 to 6, from 0 to negative 2 into a negative 2 to 0. Therefore, we have this step. Putting a negative in front, we now swap the limits, 6, 0, now to a 0, 6. Same thing, putting a negative in front, double negative give us a positive, from 0 to negative 2, now to a negative 2 to 0. So now we have converted into the expression that we have wanted. So the one in blue is actually a Q. So it's a negative Q like this. The one in green is a H, so plus H. So what does it mean to have a negative Q plus H? Now what does it mean to have a negative Q plus H? Consider the fact that Q is a negative. So a negative Q plus H, that means to say, we're actually finding the sum of area of A and B. And that is my interpretation of A part 2. And that is also the answer for the part A of this question. All right, now let us move on to part B of this question, whereby we are asked to find the area of the shaded region in peach, bordered by the line L1 and the curve. I actually consider this part B question to be so much easier as compared to part A, because we just need to find the integration of two equations. So what do I mean by that? So over here, if you have to find the integration of the curve with respect to y axis, we can actually find this whole area that I trace it out over here. Minus away the integration of the line will therefore give us the area of the triangle. So the big area minus away the area of the white triangle, we therefore have the shaded regions in peach. So with that in mind, we need to find the coordinates of A, B, and C's. Specifically, B and C's are very important because we need the area of this, we need the equation of this L1. So let's find out first by setting x to be the subject. So setting x to be the subject, our curve will therefore be 4 minus y squared. So why do we need to set x as subject? Because we are to integrate with respect to y at C's later on. So if we are to integrate with respect to y later on, we need to have a y variable and not x variable here. So to have a y variable, we need to make x the subject. And replacing your x to be a 0 to solve for a and b coordinates, x to be a 0. So y will therefore be plus minus 2. So since a is above the x axis, a is 0, 2. b will therefore be 0, comma, negative 2. And replacing a y to be a 0 to solve for your c. So replacing a y to be a 0, y to be a 0, x will therefore be a 4. Your c coordinates will therefore be 4, comma, 0. So with B and C coordinates, we can therefore find the equation of L1. So to find the equation of L1, we have a Y equals MX plus C. Let's not forget that the Y equals MX plus C, the small c here refers to the vertical intercept, which is actually a negative 2, as you can see is a negative 2. The gradient can be found by having Y1 minus Y2 over X1 minus X2 like this, giving us the gradient of half. So the equation is Y equals half X minus 2. Let's make x a subject as well because we are to integrate with respect to y again later on. So making x a subject will give us a 2y plus 4 for this L1 equation. At the same time, we also want to, for, for better visualizing, let's transfer all the coordinates into this diagram. More specifically, we have a 0 here, the origin, I'll need this 0, as well as a negative 2. So b is actually a 0 comma negative 2, so that means to say on the y axis, it's actually a negative 2 like this. So before we find the area of a region bounded by the y axis, let us first recap on this part on the left hand side of the screen. So this shaded area in pitch like this, um, given that you have x equals to f of y, so we need to integrate now with respect to y axis, with respect to y, because a and b's are on the y axis. So to find this area is given to be integrates f of y dy, all right, integrates f of y with respect to y dy, from A to B. So A being the lower limit and B being the upper limit like this. So anything to the right of the y axis is a positive area. Anything to the left of the y axis is a negative value. So over here, all of this area is actually to the right of y axis. So we are safe. It's actually all positive, positive values. So with that in mind, let us first start off with our integrations. And over here, 
if you have to integrate this curve from negative 2 to 0, all right, integrate this curve equation, this curve equations, all right, from negative 2 to 0, you'll therefore be able to find this big peach color region over here. And we have to in minus away this blue color triangle. So this blue color triangle is actually bounded by the y-axis as well as the l1s. That means to say, if you are to minus away the equation of l1s from negative 2 to 0 like this, equation of l1 is 2y plus 4 from negative 2 to 0 in the same integrations. All right, so if you take over here, as you can see, if you, if you are to take this big area minus away this blue color area, you'll therefore be able to find the required shaded regions uh, in peach like this. So therefore, taking the curve equation minus away the straight line equation, we have this part. All right. Now, we, before we do any integration, let us simplify because there's a 4 minus 4 here. We can simplify that. We don't want to be doing so many integrations. So if we have to simplify, we have uh, integrations of negative y squared minus 2y dy from negative 2 to 0. All right, so from negative 2 to 0. Now, over here, before we do any integration, let us recap on the integration of power function, integrate x to the power of n dx. Power plus 1 becomes n plus 1 divided by power plus 1 plus c. Or c is the arbitrary constant for the indefinite integration. Over here is the definite integration. Let us continue with this integration of power functions over here. So, um, power of 2 plus 1 becomes power of 3 divided by 3. Power of 2 plus 1 a power of 1 plus 1 will therefore be a 2 divided by 2 like this. So integration result will therefore be this. The upper and lower limits will therefore be transferred in this order. So let's move on to the last part of the definite integrals. So integrate f of x dx will actually give us f, capital F, bracket x. But because of this limit, we are going to substitute inside. The upper limit we substitute first minus away the substitution of the lower limits. So replace the upper limit of a zero first, minus away, replace the lower limit of a negative two into your respective y's like this. So replace y to be a zero, y to be zero, minus away, replace y to be a negative two, y to be a negative two like this, and key it into our calculator will give us four over three units squared. And that's the answer for part B of this question. I hope you have learned something again. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.